Hi, my name is Paul McElhenney and I'm going to talk to you about high frequency gyro devices at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow. The Department of Physics at Strathclyde has three major research divisions, nanoscience, optics and plasmas. Research into high frequency microwave devices is undertaken by the Atoms, Beams and Plasmas group, which is part of the plasmas division. Since 1978, this group, led by Professor Alan Phelps, has been engaged in the study of physics of high current relativistic electron beams and their interaction with electromagnetic fields and plasmas. A microwave oven is so named due to its operating frequency, which is within the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is generally defined to be between about 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz. Below 300 megahertz is called very high frequency or VHF and above 300 gigahertz is the sub-millimeter wave region. But microwave ovens are, are not the only microwaves that are encountered on a daily basis. Microwave wavelengths are also used in communication systems including satellite, radio, television, mobile phone and data transmission applications. For example, Wi-Fi internet connections operate in the microwave range. The microwave industry is therefore a huge multi-billion pound market that is constantly evolving and so there is a need for continuing scientific research to fulfill new applications as well as providing better and more efficient solutions to present technologies. There is much interest at the moment for example in finding new ways to police airports and very high frequency microwaves can be used in the next generation of airport scanners. There is also a massive incentive to produce clean energy using fu fusion and microwave technologies are crucial to this endeavour. As mentioned earlier, the communication industry has a need to expand its frequency ranges as the current frequencies have become more crowded, as well as new higher resolution radar is also at the cutting edge of research. Microwave tubes have been used to produce electromagnetic radiation since the 1930s, with conventional tubes including magnetrons, klystrons and travelling wave tubes finding diverse applications. Early advances in this area were closely tied with the research and development of radar during the Second World War and the subsequent use of the technology thereafter by the scientific community for the development of particle accelerators. The rapid growth and maturity of this technology have not restricted modern research into this field however, where their desire to produce devices with ever greater power and higher frequencies has spurred the scientific community to develop novel devices including new classes of relativistic microwave tubes such as the gyrotron. A gyrotron amplifier is a high powered microwave vacuum device that makes use of a relativistic interaction between an electron in a static magnetic field and an electromagnetic wave to produce a coherent source of amplified radiation. The frequency of the radiation produced by gyrotron is typically in the range of 10 gigahertz to 1000 gigahertz and the average power ranges from tens of kilowatts to a few megawatts. The atoms, beams and plasmas group at Strathclyde has been developing a new and unique gyrotron which can be seen here in our lab. Here we are looking into a bay which is constructed using toughened concrete blocks with a lead roof and door. This is due to the radiation given off in the form of high energy x-rays when the device is operational. The gyrotron amplifier can be seen in the centre of the picture facing out towards the camera, in front of which is a detector that is connected to diagnostic equipment outside the bay. To the left of the gyrotron are some components forming the power supply and below can be seen the vacuum system that is required to keep the system at extremely high vacuum. On the right is the cooling system that maintains the temperature of the electromagnet. A closer look at the bench shows the cooling hoses in greater de detail connected to the main magnet and a less powerful secondary magnet at the rear. The interaction cavity is inside the main body within. Here is also the output window where the radiation exits the system and is measured by the detector. Currently, the research work on this gyrotron involves the addition of an input coupler where the low power microwave signal can be introduced into the system. A new interaction cavity is also under construction. This is a complicated helical structure designed especially for this application. The mean radius, as can be seen in the picture, is only 1.3 millimetres. And finally, the output section is being redesigned to incorporate an energy recovery system. 
This depressed collector literally collects the electrons and recovers some of their energy, increasing the overall system efficiency. But in order for this to work, the microwave signal must be matched to the collector. This is done using a quasi-optical mode converter, which is essentially a horn such as can be found on a trumpet. Only in this case, the waves are not sound waves, but electromagnetic waves. This represents a new approach to the design and construction of a gyrotron amplifier, and will allow much greater operational frequency range to be achieved.